Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 69 of Build Your Stash and Craft. This week we are going to make a giant bookmark and some embellishments, and we are going to use our little spiral art that we got to make them. And we also got some any kind of string or twine and some pens or pencils. So it comes, looks like this when you get it in the package, and it has the little plastic things on top of here, which... You can see I've already made a mess of. I set these down on my tablecloth and I lose them constantly. So if you have anything that has color, they get lost so easy. So I just put a black circle around them and a black dot in the middle and that just helps me keep track of them. I still lose them a little bit, but not as bad. So you might wanna do that if you're having problems with them disappearing on your mat or whatever, just go ahead and put some marks on them. So I did go ahead, we have four colors of the little um, things to make excuse me to make these up and so the green one makes ones that look like this and depending on which hole you use depends on what it looks like now when I was younger each different set of holes made different patterns but I think that these holes no matter which which one of these lines you use I think they make the same pattern um, I'm not absolutely positive I didn't do all of them but that's the way that it seems to be so what I did do is I started out with the center hole so that would be out of the holes that are in here I don't know if you can see them that would be the one in the center and that makes this mark here and then one in from the center so going in one hole makes it a little bit bigger and then the one right in the center, because there's five holes, makes it a little bit bigger. And the one on the outside makes it even a little bit bigger. I didn't do the fourth one because I didn't have space on my paper. And I figured they all basically look the same. They just get bigger as you go. So I just went ahead and and just did it this way. So, um, so that's the green one. Um, this is the pink one. So the pink one is kind of oval shaped. And the pink one makes things like this so I've got here's my center and here's the third um, and that's this one has three holes and four holes so this is the center of the four hole one this is the center of the three hole one so it's a little bit bigger and not quite as full and then this is the outside of the um, three hole one and this is the outside of the four hole one so it's a little bit bigger so that is what the how the pink and the green turn out and then the yellow this is the yellow so this is the yellow outside hole the yellow inside hole this is the yellow uh two holes from the outside and this is the yellow um there's some tiny holes in the yellow one right in the center and so i tried one of those and that makes it a thinner a thinner line by using those smaller ones so that's the yellow and then the blue does this it does not um, it just you go around one time and then it starts to go around again in exactly the same spot so this is what the blue makes and it has three holes in it and so this is the middle hole the outside hole and the center hole so that's how these work and I'm going to show you how to make I like to make bookmarks out of these and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Oops, I just threw one on the floor. Pick that back up. And I'm going to use the green one because I like the looks of the green. And what I find is I'm right-handed. So I put this on the left side because this has a clip on it that if you cut the piece of paper exactly to fit in here, you can clip this down. It doesn't hold it down far enough and I always tend to get underneath my little thing goes underneath and then I get out of shape. So I am going to try and figure out what I did with... <laughs> Good thing they've got a dot on them. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to look at this. And I think I want the one with the smaller center. So I'm going to use the middle um, of the line. So, and I think I'm going to do it in... Let's do it in green. And so I am going to do the middle of the line. There's five holes, so the middle of the line would be the third one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this one. Now remember to hold this down. And I tend to be really heavy handed. I push really hard 
you don't have to. Um, and sometimes by pushing hard, you skip notches or you slide underneath the edges. So try and be light-handed. You know, there's no reason, I don't know why I feel like I have to push hard, but see the thing is is that this looks really pretty, kind of looks like a bow right there. You could stop right there, and if I ever stop without finishing the pattern, I just stop on a line so that you don't see the stopping point. And so I'm just going to continue this around. And now you could stop and change colors right here. Hold it down before you take your pen out. Don't forget which hole it is that you're using. Let's put some gold on this one now. So I'm going to put that right back in that same hole. And then just continue. And you can change your colors as long as you look, as many times as you want to. And then just... Make sure that you hold it down and don't lose your hole because if you forget which hole you were in, it's going to start a totally different pattern. And you'll know when you're done when you get back to where you started. And there we go. So that's what it looks like. Now, to make our great big bookmark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. And this is going to be the top of our bookmark. I just want to be a little bit careful. I'm not going to be really fussy and cut like there's kind of little like lumps like this. I'm not going to do that on this. I'm just going to cut around the edge in a circle just because it will be quicker. It'll take me long enough to cut it this way. So I don't want you to have to be there forever trying for me to try and get into all those little notches. But you can do that and it would be really pretty. And you can do that, you can put these behind flowers. This would be really pretty behind the um, crepe paper flat flowers that we made last week. And you can put them on journals. You can use them for some kind of a sentiment in the, in the center on a card. And just write a little sentiment in there like happy birthday. So there we go, we've got that cut out. Oh, I did want to show you too before I forget. When I was little, <coughs> excuse me, you um, you had a cardboard that you would pin your things down to instead of this hard plastic. But also, you could do more than one shape by just pinning it down. I don't really think I want to use the square one because it will take too long. But you can just take it, and I have a hard book under here, so I'm gonna take that out. I'm just on a cardboard box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take a couple of the tacks that we made earlier this year and just push it into the cardboard. Now you can make yourself just a, a, a couple layers of corrugated cardboard would work really well um, that you can just use over and over. And then you can take one of the other ones and you can go around the outside edge of the one that you tacked down. So by doing this, it makes bigger, even bigger um, circles, and using different ones makes all different shapes. Like if you were to put the square one on here and go around the square one with this yellow one, or use the square one and go around this green one. Let me grab that. Now, the thing is you're really gonna have to be careful with this one, you know, because it's square, it doesn't go around as easy. So we'll see if we can get it to do something. I'm just gonna go right here. And because my box has a big dent in the middle, it's kind of wanting to lift up, so I just have to push it back down again. I want to make sure that when I see it lift up a little bit, I push it down because I don't want it to out like that. I didn't want it to completely move. But anyways, this doesn't look super great. But, you know, if you took your time and kept going around, this would turn out really cool. And then you'd have the, the look of the red on top of the green. So I just wanted to show you that you can do that also. And, um, and that's another way to get different designs. 
you know, do the square one around the little one, the square one around the oval. You can, you can get so many different designs just depending on how you do it. So to make our, um, our giant bookmark, um, what I did was I just took a piece of my um, chipboard and I got myself a straight line across one side and across the top. And then what I did right from the corner, I measured over two and a half inches to here and put just a little mark. Then at the bottom, I came over and half of two and a half inches is one and a quarter. So I came over one and a quarter and made a mark. And then I went ahead and I went three quarters of an inch on each side of that mark, just so that I would, so that this would be even with the top when I made my lines. Um, if you want to do, stop now. Sorry about that. If you want to do three inches across the top, then on the bottom you just come over to an inch and a half. And then you can make this width any width that you want to. I chose three quarters, but you can choose whatever you want. Once you have those marks on there, then you just draw a line from the corner to this outside mark, not the center, but to the outside mark. And then you just draw a line from your two and a half mark down to this outside mark here. And then that gives you the outside of your bookmark. Then I just measured in a half an inch three times and I went ahead and put a little mark and then I drew a line at a half an inch here drew a line at a half an inch here and then I came up a half an inch and drew across to, to connect those two lines so this is what it looks like it's two and a, this one is two and a half inches at the top and then it's three quarters of an inch on each side of that center which is center is one and a quarter that's half a two and a half and then I put a half an inch line on there. So that's exactly what I've done here. So I'm just going to cut this out. And I will keep these measurements and put them in a book so that I have them later if I ever try and think, now how did I do that? So there we go. Now we're going to cut this center part just down to this line that we came across on. Now you can paint this before you cut it or after you cut it. You'll want to paint it. It'll be easier to paint before you put the whole thing together. I am not going to paint it today just for time wise. Now we've got to here and it's hard to make that line to cut that line, so what I do is I fold it back like this, and then I just cut it across that fold. For me, that's just the easiest way to do it. You can also do it with your X-Acto knife. There we go. And now we have these two pieces, and we're going to use them both. Okay, now I need, they don't have to be perfectly straight, I'm going to need a couple of pieces of cardboard to hold the top on my paper clip or whatever it is, uh, bookmark. So I'm just going to make it a little bit, it needs to be bigger, it needs to stick out on both sides of the largest part of the bookmark. So I'm just going to say right about here and just cut it. And then I need two that size. And see, they're not even, but that's okay. It won't make a difference. These are just to hold it together, and you won't see them at all. Okay, so now we have these two pieces. Now I need to make sure that these are not larger than my circle, and they are. So now I'm going to go back in. I could have just done this first. I really didn't have to. But I need to make sure that it's bigger than, yes, it is bigger than the outside edges of my bookmark. It sticks out on each side, and that's what we need. And now this will fit behind the center. I'm going to take off just a smidge more. There we go. Now we'll cut this one to that same size. And now we have two pieces like that. Okay, so what we're going to do in order to make it easier to use our bookmark is we are going to lift up this by a little bit and I am going to cut off and you can you can measure in about an eighth of an inch or something but I'm going to cut a little bit off each side so that there's a little bit of a gap between our outside piece and this inside piece. 
And like I said, you, if you draw a straight line, it will look better, I'm sure. My bottom's a little bit crooked, so I'm going to just straighten it up. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to place this like this, okay, with a little bit of gap all the way around. And we're going to glue it to our little supports. And like I said, you, you know, probably you want to paint it before you do this part. And if I had had my glue upside down, I wouldn't have to stand here and shake it. We're just going to put a good amount of glue on this one. Not too much. But get it all the way to your edges, and then we're going to do it to this one too. Like that. Okay. And now I usually put this one on first, and I put it oh, halfway to three quarters of the way up, and try and put it pretty centered. And then we're going to take this piece and put it on next. Stuck my hand in the glue. We're just going to even that out so it's about the same on both sides. Make sure that we're straight here at the bottom. And that looks pretty good. Just like that. And then we'll take this piece and put it over top. Like this. Okay, and then before it dries, make any adjustments that you need to make. There we go. You just kind of want to look and make sure that your spacing is about the same. And I need to get it off my paper because it is stuck to my paper. And there we go. So that's what that looks like. No, that's fine. Okay, now we're going to take our circle. And you can, you can put flowers on these. You can do anything that you want to do. I'm going to move this over. Um, I have a thing about eyes. I really like eyes. So I'm going to just take my black permanent marker. And I'm just going to go like this. And I'm not quite in the center. I am going to move over a little bit. And I should have made sure that it was more in the center. And I should have a marker that works. And I'm just going to draw that in there like that. There we go. And then fold it in half. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to, and like I said, it doesn't have to be an eye. You can just color the center. You can do whatever you want. Leave it white. Put some flowers on here. And now I'm going to measure how wide this is. I'm just going to center this on here. Like this. And then I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm going to make a little mark at the outside edge of the bookmark on each side. Just like that. Right at the outside edge. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our scissors and we're just going to barely cut off the fold. You're really just cutting off the fold. You're not cutting up hardly at all. I don't know if you can see, but see, it's just a sliver. Because all we're doing is opening up that fold. And just go to the other line and stop right there. Okay, so now if you were to open it up, it has this slit in it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our bookmark and slide it through just like that. And now see this is going to hold because our slit only comes to here when we get up to there. That's what that's for. That's a stopper. That's to hold our top on. 
and hold everything together where it needs to be. I'm sticking out a little bit on both of my corners, so I'm just going to go in and cut those off. And you can wait for your glue to dry a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna still check to make sure that I'm kind of centered while my glue is still wet. Okay, and then what you can do is you could take some of your eyelash trim just cut a piece of that okay now I'm gonna put some glue I, I even got out my glue holder didn't bother to put the glue in it I'm gonna put some glue on here and up around the edge like that and then I'm going to put some glue on the back side of this also it's glued itself down a little bit so that's good but and then you can just take your little eyelash trim and just put it on there so that it sticks out and you can do this even if you're not doing an eye. You can do it just so that it has some really pretty fringe around it. And then put your pretty flowers or something on it. I'm just going to trim this off right here. So it's long enough. And then put a little bit more glue. Again, which I did not turn upside down. Around the outside edge here. Because you, you don't want that fringe to come off. A little bit in the middle and then just fold it over and there we go now we have our gigantic bookmark and here's one that I did a while ago just to show you what they look like painted and on this one, instead of having the flat bottom, I just cut it to a point on each side and just left it at a point at the bottom instead. I kind of like the flat part better just because so that your point doesn't get bent. But And then this one, I just painted it blue and then I put um, glitter nail polish on it. And so that's what they look like. And then you can just put them out the top of a journal in a book that you're reading. They make cute little gifts. People really like them because they're big, I think. So that's what they look like. Let's slip that on there like that. And so that is our bookmark made with our spirographs. So, and then to make some thready embellishments, you can do it two ways. You can do it with your... Um, your blue one makes these nice ones. I, I was hoping to get some of these that were more like flower petal shaped so that they had definite indentions in them, like how these come together here. Um, but they, they actually, this one would work if you really wanted to take the time to go around all of those. That would take some time, but it would, but it would look really cool. And then you can also just make your own flowers just by folding a piece of paper with petals. And um, so I was just going to, thought I had some here. Yes, I do. Okay. So you just, I already cut out one that looks like this. And then you just take a piece of cardboard. You grab another piece of cardboard and, and trace around it. Um, and you don't really have to do that. The reason I'm not going to do that because it'll just take a long time. Um, if you do this in a pretty color, I did this on a piece of um, scrap paper so it's got stuff on it. But if you did it on a pretty piece of paper um, the, it, with a pretty color instead of just pencil, it would look nice. And then all you do is you just take your string and a piece of your double-sided tape. You put the double-sided tape on whatever is going to be your back. So I'm, I'll make this the back. And then just take your string any kind of string or yarn or anything and then you just start at any corner and then you can choose how to do this like you can skip two lumps and then come back down to the one next to where you were 
skip two lumps, come down to the one next to that, skip two lumps, down next to that, skip two lumps, down next to that, skip two, down next to that, skip two, down next to that, skip two. Okay, now when you go down next to that and skip two, you're in exactly the same place. So you can stop right there, push that down on the back and all the others too, and that will hold them solid, and you've got this pretty pattern on here. Now you also can, um, you can go to here and then skip three and next to that one and skip three and it doesn't matter which way you go um, let me get myself some more string here go here skip three go next to it skip three next to that one skip three next to that one skip three next to that one skip three next to this one skip three I think we should be back to the yep we're back to the beginning so that's right where our, we've already got a string there so you can do it like that and it's even fuller and it gives you a different pattern then you could do it in skip four um, you can you can do it any way that you want to you can unwrap it and the more lumps that you have um, the more um, intricate it, it is. So you could skip two, and then instead of coming back right next to that one, you could skip two here also. And then skip two, and then skip two, and then skip two, skip two, skip two, skip two, skip two. I have to say it out loud so that I don't mess it up. I skip two and skip two I'm right back to where I was but that gives you that pattern so all you do is the same thing all the way around and then I'll just push that down on there and then what I would do is I would take a little piece of card and put some glue on it and just put it right there to just hold those all in shape and that's what it looks like so those are really fun and if you don't have one of the spire graphs and can't get your hands on one you can make your own flower I just took a piece I took a square piece of paper I folded it in half folded it in half folded it in half and then I cut up just cut it into a flower and then you just open that up put it on a piece of cardboard and just trace around it and then just cut it out and then again put a piece of double-sided tape on the back and we'll just go next to it and skip two each time and then just do it this way and it just really turns out pretty now when you go here that's the line you have so now I'll skip three And I'm right back to where I started and I'm just going to give that a push now that one because I have so much more string on the back it's not catching my tape at all so I'll just put another little piece of double-sided tape on there because that's all I have right now and um, then you can just put a little piece of card and then you have that embellishment so these are really fun to make. If you have like a scalloped punch or anything or a scalloped die, you can just punch them out and do them that way. It's nice to do it on card. Always remember, however you're going to decorate your underneath side, do it before you put the string on because once you put the string on, you really can't do much with it other than you could add embellishments to it. But you're not going to be able to paint it or spray it. Whatever you do will get all over your string. So you want to make sure that you decorate it first and you can just cut all sorts of different shapes of flowers and like I said the ones that have way more scallops to them um, they get thicker. We'll do one of these really quick. Wow. Where's the end of my string? Just trying to find it here there we go and remember wherever you tape it that's your back the back does not look as nice as the front I don't know why I always thought that they should look the same but so on this one I'm just gonna skip 
Oh, let's go here. I'm not even going to count because I know that if I'm going to go next to this one and then next to this one, that's skipping exactly the same amount of lumps. Once you decide how many you want to skip, then it's just a matter of going to the very next one. Sometimes I lose my place once it starts getting this full. Let's see how much fuller this is because it has more lumps. And I actually think I might have, I might have like messed up. But that's okay because so long as I'm not going over the same place twice, if I moved it over a little bit, that'd be just like how we moved it the last time. I just did it by accident. And some of these that have a lot of them go around a long time. Oh, no. Yep, that one matches where I already started, so take that one off. I got a piece of that purple string in there. And just tape that down. So see with lots of bumps it's a lot fuller. You have a really um, nice circle in the middle of the ones with lots of lumps. So that's how you can make your little string embellishments and you can make them even with your spirograph and you can use the other two that look like this also. Cut any kind of shaped flowers that you want that have lumps on them to make them. And here's a few others. Here's a couple others that I made. So, but so that's how you can make those. And you can use any one of these three to make those. Now this one will be a little bit harder because the lumps are so short. You'll have to be careful that you don't pull your string up and over the lump when you're when you're winding it but the one with the star that would be really pretty too so that's how we make our embellishments and this is how we make our let's see if we turn it over if it looks any better and that's how we make our great big bookmarks and those would look really cute peeking up over the top of a journal I just love these I just love the eyes that's kind of my thing so I'll turn it over this way and then you can kind of see how it looks on there and when you put it in you can make it look like that or you can make it look like that either way it'll still stay on the book so this is what we did today I hope that you enjoyed this I really have fun playing with things like this so just another little something and for next week what we're going to need is um I did say I was going to change up things a little bit this year and so for next week, we're going to have to go to Menards or a hardware store of some sort. And we will need two cotter pins. And these, this is what a cotter pin is. And if you go to a hardware and ask them for cotter pins, this is what they look like. Now these packages I got, this one has, um, no, it doesn't say, one, two, three, four. This one has six in it. This one has four in it, and this one has two in it. So get two packages of cotter pins that are different sizes. One that's kind of smaller. This one is one-eighth, that's how big around it is, by one and a half, and that's how long it is. So this one is a one-eighth, so we'll use this one, and we'll use this one. And this one is five thirty seconds, and it's one and a half inches long. It doesn't matter what size you get. It doesn't matter how long they are. Um, you don't want something that's only like a half an inch long. You want it at least an inch long. And then any size around, but just two different sizes. So we will need these, and we will need our um, polymer clay that we bought. And that's what we will need for next week. So these were 50 cents a package. They were um, 49 49 and 59 so approximately 50 cents a package we're going to say that that is going to be one dollar and that's all we're going to spend this week is one dollar so before this um week before last we had 16.50 in the bank after the crepe paper flowers 
but I did do that flash video and spent five dollars on the Easter egg kits a couple weeks ago and so that left us with $11.50 in our bank. Now, if you didn't get a chance to get the Easter egg kits and spend the $5, just go ahead and use $5 to buy whatever it is you need. Some more paints, some more polymer clay, some more whatever it is that you need. Glue um, or whatever. So, excuse me. So we had $13.50 in our bank after we spent that $5. This week, we are going to spend a dollar. And, and you only need two cutter keys of two different sizes so if you go to a hardware store and they have them separately um, I can buy them at my regular little local hardware store and they're like 20 cents a piece so I could buy a bigger one and a littler one and when I say bigger little littler I am talking about the size around that they are you know this one is bigger around the metal is bigger than the metal in the two pieces here so and that is your 1 8 your 3 16 your five thirty seconds that's how big around they are so just make sure you get two different sizes and then at least one inch long so we'll need two of those for a dollar and that's all we're spending this week so that will leave us with four dollars to add to our 1350 so after this week we will have 1750 in our bank so I really hope that you did like this week's projects I just love the great big bookmarks I think they're really cool for journals and um, you know and even just for reading so, because you're not going to lose your place with that thing sticking out the top. And like I said, if um, if you want to put flowers on them, decorate them all different sorts of ways, they really look pretty. Um, and you can even, like with these ones, I was thinking these would be cute with a, with a paper clip on them so that you could clip them into journals. So there's a lot of little tutorials right now where they're doing the big, just the paper clips and they're putting things on them so but thank you very much for watching I really really do appreciate it and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye